So last year I got to create some graphics for the MLB on Fox Sports. And at the time, I remember when I was working on these, I remember thinking how awesome would it be if we can just convert all of them into motion graphic templates. In other words, so I can just hand that template over to an editor and they can make all the adjustments they need. They can change the text and the images. But the problem was at the time, we didn't have that feature available. We couldn't replace images and footage directly in Premiere without leaving Premiere to go into After Effects. So we couldn't utilize that. And because of that, we couldn't convert a lot of them into Mogrids. We did convert some of them, but not all. And so this year, we do have that feature available. We can replace images and footage directly in Mogrids in Premiere without ever leaving Premiere. And that's awesome. So I decided to revisit that MLB project and re-export them with that feature added on. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm just going to go over these Mogrids to kind of show you what they do. And uh, yeah, I think they're very powerful. And you, you know, if you do follow MLB, you've probably seen some of them on Fox Sports. So let's go to the first one. We have this one right here. It's the team matchup. I'm going to bring this in. Now keep in mind, these are Mogerts. Essentially, they are After Effects projects in Premiere. So some of them do lag because, I mean, it's an After Effects project in Premiere. I mean, you do have to rem preview stuff in After Effects. So you shouldn't expect any different in Premiere. I think they're actually faster in Premiere. But anyway, let me show you what this one does. Let me show you this. As you can see, it's pretty much real time. I am I am running on a laptop here. I am running it at full and I do have screen capturing running. So that's not bad at all. So it's pretty impressive. So let me preview that again. You can see it's just a matchup and I can click on this and I can actually navigate over to the essential graphics panel. We have edit here. I did add these options in here. Now this one doesn't have image replacement, but uh, it's still pretty, pretty powerful. So you can choose any team you want and based on your selection, the logo, everything will be changed. So that's for the away. We have the home team as well. So you can change things. Look, that's a perfect example. As you can see, this team has a logo that's the same color as the primary color. So that's why for this, I've added this colors option. So we can go to home because we're dealing with the home team. And right here, we have primary secondary. So you can just reverse them. You can say secondary primary and then that's perfect so you can do that you can also set it to custom you can pick any custom colors you want and it will show up in here so you get the idea that's how it works but i'm going to set it primary secondary and you can do the same thing for away as well so you do have some color options so you don't have to bug anybody you can do it straight here without leaving premiere to go into after effects so again you can pick any teams you can also change this logo in here to whatever logo uh, you want so that's the first one. That's the matchup. It's pretty easy. Now, I know it seems simple, but keep in mind, before we had to, it was an After Effects project. So we had to go into After Effects. We had to ask a graphics person to version out different versions of the matchups. And they had to render out videos. And they had to like, it was just time consuming. It was lots of renders. And then if you made a mistake, you had to go back. But with this, an editor just pulls in one template and they can make all the changes. And if the logo's changed, you just update the template, give them another one, and that's it. So this workflow is definitely here to stay. I think it's going to change the industry, especially broadcast industry big time. So we have the second one right here. This is a single player capper. Let me bring this in. Let's see how fast this one is. So keep in mind, it's pretty hefty. We are running at full here. So let's see if it's real time. So this one's not quite real time. You can see it does lag a little bit, but not too bad. I mean, for an After Effects project, and by the way, this is 1920 by 1080 and 60 frames per second because uh, broadcast is 60 frames. So yeah, I'm happy with this. So I'm going to select this and let's go to the edit here. Let me show you some of the options you can adjust. And here we have team, so you can choose any team you want. And based on the team that you choose, it adjusts the colors. We don't have a logo in here, but it's mainly colors. So you can choose any team, but let's go to Houston for this one. Where is it at? It's right about here. There you go. So you pick the team, then you can pick a logo right here, any logo you'd like. And based on your selection, it adjusts. The animation stays the same. Then we have first and last name. So you can type anything you want. I'm going to do my name. And based on what you type, it will automatically adjust. If I click away, you can see everything shrinks. So it doesn't matter how long the name is, it will adjust everything. It's very smart, even for that one too. So yeah, obviously, it's a little extreme here, but you get the idea. You can change the number like this. Just type any number you want in here. And then we have player. So this is the image replacement feature that uh, I was telling you about. So we couldn't do this before, but now I can go over here and uh, select any kind of images in here. Just pull them in here and you can see it automatically replaces 
whatever image you drag in here. Obviously, you can adjust some things. So for example, if I pull this in here, I can adjust the height. Or I guess this is the scale, okay? You can, I guess you can do it proportionally. Yeah, you get the idea, but you don't want to do that. So this is the scale. You can uncheck this. And uh, yeah, you get the idea. You can scale it up. You can bring it to the right side, left side. You can pull it down. You can even rotate it some. So you get the idea. You can do all kinds of stuff. And whatever you do, it's going to pretty much keep it the same. I mean, the animation stays the same. As you can see, it's... Yeah, it's pretty impressive. The fact that you can do all of that in Premiere is unreal. I mean, uh, it's, it's it's great. So then you can do the same thing for colors of, you know, you know that concept. You can say secondary, primary, maybe for some for some uh, line, like a team colors, things don't work that well. Maybe that's perfect, but maybe you want to see what it would look like if you reverse the colors. Yeah, maybe something like that is great. So that's this and uh, yeah, image replacement is a game changer for sure. So then we have uh, this right here. Now this one is a bit beefier because there's a lot of uh, things happening in here. I'm kind of just, yeah, it even loads a little longer, but I'm just going to scroll through it. We have like a scene one, we have like the city uh, shot, then we have scene two. So this one is the, uh, what is it called? City capper, yeah. So we have city two and then we have the final kind of matchup. So let me see if it previews in real time. Let's see. I mean, not quiet. You can tell it lags, but still not bad at all. I mean, we are running it at full, which is great. And then we have this. So, but this one has lots of different options to adjust. So if you select this and navigate to the edit tab here, we have matchup capper. So you can uncheck this and it gets rid of the players, the matchup, and it becomes like a generic. So if I go back over here, it will do the same thing, but it doesn't have like the team colors applied. It doesn't have any of that. So it goes to the second scene and then it goes to this. So you get the idea. But you can turn up the turn on the uh, matchup capper. Essentially, it's like two Mogrits in one. That's why it's 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 lagging a bit because it's got a lot of stuff loaded up. And then we have right here away home team. You can choose any team you want. And based on your selection, you'll see the colors adjust. So let's do something that's not, not blue. Maybe they're all I noticed. A lot of uh, baseball teams have blue as their color. There you go. That's much better. So you can pick any teams like this. You get the idea. So you, you pick a team. And you can also adjust the uh, text in each scene. So you have this one right here. You can just say one, two, three, and boom, it changes it. You can go to the next scene. You can. Uh, by the way, each scene has like a different color based on your team selection. So you can go over here and say New York City. And you can click away, you get the idea, it adjusts. So yeah, it's super handy like this. You can adjust title fonts and it will do the same thing for the other one as well. So you can do this. Then we have images. So the images is very interesting because we have not only players, but we also have the like the city. So we can go to the city here and we can pull things in here. And so that's the first one right here. Let's, well, I guess it's the same image. Yeah, it's the same image I was dragging in. So you can, pull any kind of images in here and instantly things adjust and the animation stays the same. I mean, there's a lot happening. Let me see if this previews. Yeah, you get the idea. So you can pull in any images. So that's for the scene uh, city one. Then let's go scene two here and find different image for that. So again, you can pull anything you want into it and it will replace it, which is perfect. And then for the last one here, we do have the skyline in here which let's see if we can, well, let's find it first. Let's go in here and find the skyline. There you go. This is the skyline image. You can bring it in. So maybe not that one. That's not a good one. Let's find, yeah, there you go. So then you can kind of adjust. You can pull it down some. And maybe you want to pull it all the way down. Anyway, I just want to show you that you can make all kinds of adjustments and you don't have to open up After Effects. You can do it all in Premiere, which is great. And the same thing goes for the images of the players. You can find the players and bring them in. So that's too big here. And again, whatever image you bring in, you can adjust. So you can actually select this. You can adjust the size of it. There you go. And uh, yeah, you can pull players in. You get the idea. So let's try this one as well. So yeah, whatever you bring in, you can change it. I'm going to copy this size. It's probably going to be about the same. Yeah, so instantly you've made something like this. It, it, yeah, it's super handy. I love this. 
So that's the city capper and colors. The same goes for that one. You can change things up. You can say secondary, primary, all that stuff. So you can change it up. Now I'm going to get rid of this one. Let's go and talk about these two. So those are the widgets that I created for um, like in-game stuff. In fact, I have a footage in here. I can show you what they look like. So it's something like, I'm sure if you've seen baseball, you've seen something like this to where uh, like, yeah, commentator talks about different throws. I'm not a, I'm not a big, like, I don't know much about baseball, but I guess they can point things out in the footage, what things are. And uh, you have like the name, you have the, the player stuff. And I mean, you also have something like this to where they kind of describe. So let me play this. They kind of show different throws and they kind of describe how fast they are. So, so they needed a widget like this to point to things. And they, they were just asking us like, hey, can you create something like this uh, that can be easy to edit and stuff like that. So that's what I created. I created both of these and let me show you what they do. Let's go back to here. I'm gonna pull this one in. It's very simple, but it's very um, helpful for sure. You'll see here in a second. So I'm gonna preview this. You can see it kind of just animates in like this. Uh, you already saw it in here. So it's basically the same thing. But this thing is very powerful because it has a lot of different things you can adjust. So you can select this, you can go to the essential graphics, edit in here, you can position it anywhere you want to. You can adjust the scale of the whole thing. You can also, let me undo this. You can also adjust the arrow, this thing right here. You can set it to stroke and fill. You can set it to stroke only or none. So it's up to you. So you have some options in here. You can also point it at any direction. So you can, as you can see, you can point it anywhere. I actually rigged it to where you can, if, if things change, it will still go around the whole thing. So it's very responsive like that. Let me undo this. Then you have like the scale of the arrow. You can adjust the width of the stroke. You can adjust the spacing. You can put it out, out here somewhere. So that's for the arrow. Then you have title one, title two. So you can change this, maybe like a curve ball. And let's see what that looks like. It adjusts, maybe you wanna make it bigger. You get the idea, everything responds pretty well. Then you can adjust the spacing between the two. You can maybe get rid of the second line. So maybe that's something you're going for. And uh, let's see what else. We have the text right here for speed. So maybe you wanna get rid of it. So let's preview this right now. Maybe you wanna get rid of it. You can go over here and say title only. So that's something what you saw in here, I believe. Yeah, it was this thing, it's the same It's the same thing. And so you kind of points to it, you can maybe point to the other, you can go to the arrow again, put it maybe at negative 90, or what is it? No, maybe 90. So put it on the other sides, again, very helpful. So what else do we have? Then you can adjust for the, let's bring that back, so this number right here, you can adjust the number, maybe it's like 99.9, .9, and then it adjusts it in here. Maybe you wanna put more decimals you can kind of bring more decimals in, or maybe you want like the font size to be bigger, right? So again, it's very responsive like that. Then you can do spacing between the two. You can also do like a different animation. In some cases, I'm not sure which one they went with. Let's see if I preview this. Let's see this real quick. Yeah, it kind of slides up from, from down here. So it slides up, but I did create uh, like an alternative animation for them to use. I haven't seen them use it yet, but it's this checkbox. So right now, if I preview this, you can see it kind of slides up, but you can check this and it kind of will shuffle it in like this. So you can see it kind of shuffles it in. I try to think of like a radar. It kind of like generates random numbers. So it's the same kind of concept. So you can kind of shuffle between the two. And that's really it for this one. You can also adjust like the colors if you want. But yeah, it's pretty simple. But Again, for stuff like that, they had to go into After Effects. They had to request like a graphics person to create this stuff and then render it. So it was baked, right? So they couldn't really do any more changes. Any kind of changes that they had to make, they had to go back to the graphics person and they had to make all the changes, render it. And sometimes you're in a truck and you just don't have the time. And um, this comes in very handy because at any time they can change things, they could turn things on and off. And that's all in one Mogurt. Now, there is also in this one right here, there was also this feature here that they wanted me to create. And it's this thing right here. Let me show you what that does. Let me go back to this one right here. So if I preview this, you can see it's pretty real time. It's very small. So we have a player, we have 
the first name, last name, and all that stuff. But remember, last year, we didn't have the image replacement feature. So someone had to, and I was doing that actually, I had to replace the image for each game and uh, update the name and all that stuff. So again, it's another thing you had to do. You had to render it. You had to stop what you were doing and lots of renders. But let me show you how easy it is to change it now. So you just go into here. You can position it anywhere you want to. You can scale it down, up. It's up to you. You can choose any team you want. And based on your selection, you'll find a different logo in the back. You can, let me go back to that one. You can also do like a different position, but really for this case, it was only pictures. So you need to just set it to pictures. That's all you need. And based on what you picked, you know, you have position right here. Everything's adjustable, which is perfect, but we're going to go to picture. Then you can change the name. You can say something like Sergey, and let's go here. Let's do Pra. That's good enough. So based on what you type, you can see it's super long, but, uh, this one actually you have to adjust manually so if you have a long last name you have to actually where is it at i believe it's right here so we have line one line two you can actually adjust it yourself so the whole line like that you can adjust things and it will always keep it centered but yeah you do this one i didn't add that auto resize feature i'm not sure why i didn't maybe it was just uh, yeah, I didn't do that, but you can do it manually here, which is in some cases it's, it's good because you can keep things more consistent. I think that's probably why you, we want to make sure everything is consistent. Um, yeah, so you can adjust the size of each line in there. You can also go over here and put a different number for the player. So whatever you type in here, it will adjust in there. You can do image replacement. So I do have some images of the pictures, so you can drag them in here. And whatever you drag, it will automatically replace things. So that's perfect. This one, you didn't even have to make adjustments because they're all the same. So you just pull any kind of images in and you're done. So change the names. Uh, you, I mean, you can change the size and stuff like that, but it, yeah, it's perfect for this. What else do we have? We have font line one. We talked about this. Then we have spacing. You can give like spacing if you want. You can do line spacing. And essentially that's it. But again, it's something minor. It doesn't, you might think like it doesn't require a lot of work, but again, remember you had to go into After Effects. You had to request that kind of change. Uh, maybe if you made a misspelling or something like that. Uh, so this saves a lot of time for sure. But let's keep going. And let's see what else do we have here. We have two more. So we have this one right here. It's the uh, play, our team players matchup. So this one's going to be a pretty pretty heavy one because it has like two mogrits in one. And uh, so I'm expecting for it to be pretty slow. So let's see if it lags, how badly it lags. Let's preview this. Yeah, you can already tell. I mean, it's not bad. Keep in mind, it is an After Effects project file, but let me, let me preview this again. Sometimes it takes a few tries to kind of cash it in. Let's see what this one does. Yeah, it's much better. So you kind of get the idea of the visual, but keep in mind, this one has like two Mogrits. So we have like the one option for two players, so you can switch it to six players. So it has a lot of different things loaded up. So let's see how quickly, yeah. As you can see, we have six players in here and you can change all of them in here. So you have two players you can change. You have uh, also six players. Well, no, let's go back to images. It's two players and six players in here. So we have lots of things to change. And probably for this one, it, it probably make more sense to separate them into two different mogrids. That way it's not so heavy, but I didn't get to it. So again, you can change the images. You can do all of that stuff. You can adjust. Let me go back to two. You can adjust the teams, whatever team you pick. The background will change the logo. Uh, you get the idea. So anyway, yeah, it's that easy. Keep in mind, I'm making it look easy, but before you had to do this by hand, you had to go into After Effects, you had to go into different compositions and change things on and off. And I mean, it just took a long time and then you had to render it. But now you just take the time to rig the thing right, which, I mean, you do have to know how to use expressions. I mean, it does require some advanced knowledge, but once you set it up right, you just hand it off to an editor and then you don't have to hear back from anybody. They just make everything they make from that one template. Again, you can change the logos, the colors, all of that stuff is in here. You can set it to secondary, primary, or wait, yeah. Secondary here, primary here. Oh, those are for team, oh yeah, home and away. So you can say maybe if they're the same colors, you can kind of play around right now. Yeah, so that is that. Let's see, we have one more. I'm gonna get rid of this. Let's go to this one right here. We have team capper. Now that one is pretty hefty too. Let me bring that in. All right. 
it even loads a little longer than the other ones. Yeah, but again, remember, these are After Effects project files in Premiere. So let me preview this real quick. I mean, it's not bad. You can see it kind of brings in like this. You can select this. You can go to select this. Yeah, I can tell my system struggling a little bit. So you can select this, go to the Essential Graphics, Edit. We have options in here. So you can pick any team you want, and instantly you'll see the city name, the, the team name, the logo, the colors. Everything changes. Again, you have to do this all by hand, going into different comps and After Effects. But here you can do it on the fly. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it, with, uh, with the way it works. I mean, it's still pretty quick. And uh, you can change the logo, but I don't have to do all these changes. The editors can do that quickly and they can replace images in here just to show you that it works. Let's go to action images in here. So we have action in here. I can bring that in. Maybe something like this. You can scale it some. It's probably too much, but yeah, instantly. And you can see it's probably, I mean, you, you probably have to make some adjustments, but for the most part, it's pretty quick. Let me pre preview that again. He kind of slides in, boom, done. Now we also have like a skyline in here. I do have that image. Let me, let me go to the very bottom here. So we have this like an image of the city. You can go to any city here and pull it in and it will replace it. So again, you can do this instantly on the fly. You can push in, get anything you want. And uh, I mean, this is amazing. The fact that you can do all of that in Premiere without ever leaving Premiere is just mind blowing. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a game changer. I think Mogurts are definitely here to stay. If you don't know how to use expressions, if you don't know how to create these, I would probably spend your time learning these because I think this is definitely going to be the future. Uh, that's how things are going to go. And uh, I think that's all I got for this. So that's the Mogurts that I created for MLB on Fox Sports. And uh, I enjoy creating these. I think it's a lot of fun, but but I'm excited about like where the Mogurts are going to go next. I think they're going to go they're going to get better, faster. I mean, each year I've seen that. I've seen the Mogurts get faster. I, I even think these Mogurts are faster in Premiere than they are in After Effects. They just load faster. They uh, preview faster. And uh, I think uh, Mogurts are definitely here to stay. So thank you for watching this video. By the way, if you're not a part of our mentoring group on Facebook, you should definitely join. It's totally free. Go to ukramedia.com slash community. We have some giants of this industry rubbing shoulders with everybody in that group. And they're so kind. Uh, they're just willing to help. If you have any questions, they'll answer it for you. But we have people that are there for all kinds of reasons. They're there to help somebody. They're there to get help. Or they do both. So definitely join ukramedia.com slash community. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Praknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.